I say, me taste it and that taste like cold. Mother, you did what? I say, what do you mean, mother, me did what? I say, sit and come out and pick him out and I taste it. Because I want to know how. And she was like, mother, next time don't do that. So listen to me. You can't tell me what to do and what not to do. You control kids, they don't control me. I'm 21 year old, I just look like a pig in a big man. Don't tell me what, not, what to do and what not to do. I say something come out of my child's mouth and it tastes like coal. And I never carry it. Another mother video. Oh, So, guys, I'm here with a story time. But before we get into the story time, guys, you don't know me. I gotta tell you, no. So, if I like, click the like bell button. You want the like bell? Click the like button, guys. What's wrong with y'all? So, like, comment, and share, guys. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Come join Anna K. Gyan. Period. So, guys, um. This video is about my baby. Um, I had guys. You never know more about her soon because um, I'm supposed to do a Q and A about her. So may I give you the opportunity, guys, for ask me some questions. So before, so what you can do now, guys, when you can drop some comments in the comment section about her, like questions about her. We know what I'm gonna do. Uh, may I do a Q and A about baby? So guys, I wanted to do the video with her, but she's sleeping and she just wake. So in the video in me, I just make gonna stay around stuff. If she not start by I may have to stop the video. So guys, I had her December 19th, um, of the year 2020, which is last year. And um guys, she came out one ounce from ten pounds. She was a big baby. Um uh she uh I'm gonna say this now, guys. She, I carried her to my mom's house on uh, Christmas Day. Guys, she did her whole day Christmas Day. Boxing Day, you now, guys. She started defecating a lot. She was only, um, let's see, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. She was like a week old. Guys, she started defecating a lot. I said, Jesus. Um, so and she that cry and she never that sleep and she never wanted the breast. So my mother said, I don't care to be with God children. Guys, my care got children. I'm care got children, guys. Um, them say my for strip her down and put her up on the skin, my do that. Them say my for wait till see doctor, my wait for see doctor, them take blood, them say it got a lot. They sent me to ward seven. They checked her out and them gave her the injection and draw the blood and whatever. They said she defecating um, that of, that often is normal because she's a newborn and they do defecate often. Guys, I wasn't really <laughs> worried when they said it. I was like, okay, so that's normal. Guys, when I went, what happened? When I went, um to the ward guys they sent me to ward eight i went to ward eight and uh, um i spoke to the doctors there and they said um i have to sit in a line somebody was there with their kids so i had to wait until they finished that person and i could go up next and spoke to the doctor speak to the doctor so guys while speaking to the doctor i said to the doctor what's happening with her and uh, what must i do can i bring her home because guys the motive for me was to bring her home because I was so frantic and I'm scared and I'm worried what is going to happen to her. I want to see the doctor now. And they said to me, say, Mother, we cannot tell you that we are going to send you home with this child. Because we have a blood sample and we need to check the blood sample and make sure, say, nothing to do. Her. Guys, Jesus, there's the result come back. They find sodium in a seven-day-old baby. I say, sodium? What do you mean the fence so them in our blood? So we can't we can't go with my child, they have to keep her. I said, alright then. Fine, so you mean our blood, they don't have to keep her, alright. 
I said to them, them said I'm going to admit to her. I said, I can't carry her back tomorrow. I'm not going to know she's sick. She's sick and not carry her back for the admit her. I can't just please carry her back tomorrow. I'm going to admit her. They said, I can't. Then I'm going to admit her now. Guys, I was there. I watched them take off her clothes. Same time in the hours and I bought after 11. Change her clothes. Give me her clothes. Be her. Guys, uh, she was there for 10 days. Um, Every day, guys, I carry six pampas. And then I carry... A ointment to rub. I carry two ointments. Give me a second, guys. So these are the two ointment, guys. This and this, guys. Two ointment to rub on her vagina and her bottom. So guys, I gave them those two to rub on her. Um, so that she didn't to prevent diaparash guys so guys after um the first night that they admitted her guys i cried um she had on a little yellow suit and guys it had her scent in it and i held on to that yellow suit every night and i cried and i smelled it and whatever guys i missed her so so much and she was so little was so young we just had my baby for six days and for seven for a week and we just had to take her away like that so guys i went up there she was there for 10 days and for the 10 days i went up there i was there every single day not a day missed me i was late once from she was there the 10 days it was only one time that i was late guys um the I went as I said guys I went up there every day with pampers and um, um, pampers and breast milk but what I did guys I checked the pampers say so four pampers leave I put one more than likely sometimes two pampers leave sometimes three so it depends on how much pampers I leave them with five pampers daily but I always leave, make sure some leave them with at least five pampers because guys if somebody don't child so for instance you don't carry any pampers for your child what they will do is take pampers from what another parent bring and put it on your child so guys i don't have it like that i'm sorry me not leave no case of pampers up there for them put it on everybody picnic i'm not doing it i don't have it me have to work too hard for my money for you leave your child unattended without pampers for whatever reason and them use my pampers and put on your baby. I do not have it. Me, me just not have it. However rude that one sound, I do not have it. So I can't afford to leave more than five pampers. Because newborn deer at $8,000 for it. It's not cheap. So guys, um, one day though, I came in. And you have to wash your hands guys. You have to wash your hands. Um, take up a chair, put it down, wash your hand and put, they give you a thing to put over your clothing. Guys, one day I went and my baby was... Guys, only to find out my child was choking on her own vomit. I have to lift her out, I went at the thing with my vagina, turn her over, clap her back two times and she bring up. I'm going to get mad. I said, sir, this is my opinion. I'm going to kill her. Imagine the baby I choke on her, vomit on everybody. Guys, everybody on them phone. I'm a baby that they choke on her, vomit. And, oh, mother, is nothing serious. When well, next morning, I come. Just in time to see my baby. As I take her up, guys, it's like they never burp her. And as I take her up, I put a handful of vomit come from out of her mouth. Guys, me no business. Anything come out of my pit, I taste it. Because it can, if, can, if that cannot come out of your mouth, me, why am I supposed to taste it? I'm going to say to her, I'm going to say to the doctor, say, the baby have um, developed a cold while she's here. And I'm say, no. I'm say, yeah, no, I'm not ask you. I say, me taste it and that tastes like cold. Mother, you did what? I say, what do you mean, mother? Me did what? I said, sit and come out of my pit in my mouth and I taste it. Because I want to know a what. And she was like, mother, next time don't do that. I said, listen to me. You can't tell me what to do and what not to do. 
You control kids, they don't control me. Me a 21 year old, I just look like a pity me a big man. Don't tell me what to do and what not to do. I say something come out of my child's mouth and it tastes like coal. And I never carry her with no coal. That means up here she develop it. They must say, um, up here get it developed. So they must say, um, they must run some blood test and have no coal. People have something else. So, I say, alright. Every morning, my girl, guys, my breastfeed her, I change her pampers, I put her back to sleep before I leave. Every morning, I read Psalms over her head, at least five Psalms over her head. I clip her fingernail and so. Um, she has shed skin, guys, because she was way overdue. So when I go one morning, I just see like her skin has strip all over her face, her neck, her arm, her bottom, her foot bottom, her legs, everywhere, guys, it's a shed um, skin. Like the old skin have come off with the new skin now. My, uh, my rubber are done with olive oil and my pearl bar. My read that Bible. My video color that film see because I only one pair, pairing could have gone in. And because him now have no breast milk, him say, you know why like best me wall out and you go in. So video call my guys. They know why your video call while they in there. They know why you take a picture of your kids. But guys, me screech and take a couple pictures well of her while she was there. And um... After all of that happened, um, the fifth day, they broke silence and them tell me what happened. I went, guys, she had a, um, I don't remember what it's something name, but you can get, get drip through here. And one morning I came, guys, one was here still in her skin one was in the side of her foot and one was across her back I said what? so I called the nurse and they said mother we are going to talk to all the parents this morning so you know what's going on with your baby today guys so I said alright guys when they spoke to me they basically said to me that they took fluid from her back I don't know what kind of fluid and they can't ask me because they didn't say it they took fluid from her back, guys. And um, they said to me, the reason why she's been there, she had a urinary tract infection. And she's on two medications. One, give, um, one given twice daily. And one given three times daily. One in the morning, one in the midday. And one in the evening around 6 o'clock. Guys, when they said that to me, I asked them what caused it. They said it can be when she defecates, it enters, it gets into the vagina. That's what's called the urinary tract infection. Guys, after they had her, the, the tenth day, they told me that, okay, mother will be sending her home. Guys, me go up there the morning, well excited to me, I carry on the baby, them say, we can't carry her home now because she have one do she have two doses of medication leave. I must just leave the breast milk and they will call me in the evening to come get her. Guys, they called me this guys those nights though those nine nights that I slept with her were nights of pain, stress, anger, weakness. Guys, I remember I didn't eat for five days. And when I finally eat, guys, my mother cursed me and she was like, I have to eat something. You have to eat something when you dead. Oh, you're gonna see Nasi again. I'm gonna say, No, I'm gonna just eat because I want to see my baby again, guys. It was the hardest thing I had to do was to leave. When I went to visit her, I had to leave by 12. Guys, it was so hard. Sleeping without her, it was so hard. And, guys, I said to um, when I went the ninth, the tenth day, day, um, they told me I must go to the lab, carry her to the lab for them to do an ultrasound. I brought her to the lab, they did the ultrasound. They're saying they're not seeing anything there, she's okay. When I they said they would get the results by midday to tell me to call me later and give me the updates. They called me and they said I could come for her, she's okay. They, are, they didn't find anything in the ultrasound that she did there. I can bring her home. Guys, when I bought her home, I was so happy. I missed her so, so much. And guys, 
when um I went for her, they gave me a slip and they said I must come back Friday because they discharged her the Wednesday, they said I must come back the Friday for them to do a test to see if she still has the infection so they can give me medications for her or the infection is cleared up guys when I went and they told me that okay we are going to give you this they gave me that piece of paper when I read the paper it said deaf department so she said um you have to make an appointment for the deaf department because the antibiotic that we gave the child could cause deafness guys them wait till them done get the injection when she'd have been deaf before them tell me say the injection could have caused deafness guys guys i was so worried i called the deaf department they took so long to they, i call them like january and they give me a date in march no i call them january and they give me a date in april yeah in late april they give me a date to went to come up there i went up there they did it they said they it's fine she's hearing okay the only thing happened is that she has wax in her ears that's the only thing and i said okay and they said i must carry the information to the clinic that i had her in so guys she went to clinic late because you know you got six day clinic she could have got six day clinic because she in hospital for 10 days so our first new year's eve our first new year's was spent in the hospital guys that was one of the things where shot me up also just to say big new years everybody have them baby i mind the hospital guys i cried i literally i cried i felt so bad and when they discharged her guys um it was the best day of my life um guys to be honest with children they are professionals but i don't think they do this some of them i don't think they do their job for the love of it i just feel like oh this gets the bill paid so let's do it that's what i honestly feel because there's no way a child can be there choking and you don't see one morning guys i came in and a child face was stuck to the glass like the, the child couldn't breathe and i said you know what anything what i'm gonna I'm, I'm take up the baby i'm gonna flip her over I'm a son to say the baby couldn't breathe and everybody's there on their phone. And who not on them phone and write them in their own business. Nobody not pay attention to the child. We could have dead here and suffocate and lose their life. And then they tell the mother all sorts of foolishness. The mother said to the mother, say, Mother, you know, to be honest with you, some of us were on our phone. Some of us were talking. Some of us were on Snapchat taking pictures and sticking out our tongue out of our heads. And their child died. But guys... I that was the worst experience I wouldn't wish that on my enemy I wouldn't wish it on my enemy so guys I just want to say stay positive if your child is in the hospital your child is deformed can't walk can't talk is blind guys don't give up on your kids and don't let what doctor said deter, um, de um, tear you down because they told me my child would be deaf and every move, 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 she just want to hear her father come in. Nasty, I'm home. She start to scream. She just want to wake and I see nobody. I'm um, take time to pull the door. I say, hey, where you cry for? She stop crying and I start looking for me, which my mommy did. My baby with them say with that death. The devil is a liar, guys. Pray. I now stop telling them for pray and believing in God. Any dis um disability a child have enough no treat the channel is no beat the child and get upset at the child god of god and god now give more than what you can bear believe in him trust him pray to him if you have to sit down and cry to myself father god i'm tired of this sit down and cry so guys those are my few encouragement to you thanks for being here thanks for watching my story time guys drop drop in the comments on what i see me do or go back to my instagram and give me some suggestions of video you want me to do until i see you later guys
Thank you. 